This week on Kayak USA, I've got a subscriber's kayak in the shop. Uh, they brought me this kayak. It is taking on water. It's got some cracks in the hole and they wanted to see if I could fix it for them. So this week I'm gonna teach you guys how I go about locating the cracks, finding where the water's coming into the boat, permanently sealing them and protecting the bottom of the boat from future damage. Y'all stick around. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, my name's TJ, welcome to Kayak USA. So today I have a subscriber's kayak in my shop. Now, before we get into all this boat repair, I do wanna say right now, I do not do this on the side. This is not something that I do. So please don't watch my video and then contact me and ask me how much I charge to repair your kayak. Just follow along. I make these videos for you guys so that you can learn how to do this yourself without someone doing it for you. This is a local subscriber's kayak. He's had it in a couple of different shops trying to repair the cracks. It takes on a lot of water and he just, they couldn't repair it for him. So I'm gonna give it a shot in today's video, doing it the correct way, which I believe everybody thinks their way is the correct way, but this is the way I do it in today's video. So if you follow along and do it step by step, if you've got a crack in your kayak or your, the hull of your boat or whatever, follow along with what I do and you can repair it yourself and you don't have to hire anybody or take your kayak anywhere else. But before we get into that, I do want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor. This week's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. I actually joined Skillshare to learn how to use Premiere Pro better. Uh, it's the software that I use to edit my videos for you guys on YouTube and Instagram. And and they have several classes on just that from beginner to intermediate even advanced classes and I even found out that one of my favorite youtubers has his own class on how to edit his videos Marcus Brownlee I've always loved his content on YouTube I've always thought his videos are edited great and I'm able to actually listen to him and go through a class that he has on Skillshare and I'm learning how to get out better product and better quality videos for you guys most of the classes are under 60 minutes long with short lessons to fit anyone's schedule. The first 1,000 subscribers to click the link in the video description below will get a one month free trial at Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. All right, so quick backstory on this Hobie. This is an older model. I think it's like a 2009 Hobie Outback. Uh, it's like the Mirage Drive Outback, the original kind. But the guy who owns this, he actually lives out here on the Coosa River and he doesn't do any kayak fishing or anything like that, surprisingly, but he does use this for cardio. So he likes to get out and pedal around. And if you guys have ever been on a Hobie with the Mirage Drive system, like my pro angler has, you know that it's a good workout. So if you live on the water, what he does in this boat is, is really good for you. It's a good workout and he likes to go out, do a few hundred yards a day or, or a couple of miles or I'm, he goes a lot further than I would go just pedaling around. But anyway, over the past couple of years, he started taking on a little bit of water at a time until it got to the point where he said he couldn't go a hundred yards off of his dock before the complete hull filled up with water and he would start to sink and have to come back. So he actually took it to a few shops and I'm gonna show you guys the repair job that was done to this from the other shops. And then I'm gonna show you guys how I go about doing it. Now, I'm not saying my way is the buy all, sell all, do all, the perfect way to do it, okay? This is the way I do it. If you've got another way that works for you, that is fine. But if you wanna do it my way, I've had, I've had a lot of success in repairing kayaks. If you watched my older video, it was actually a Mirage Drive Outback that I repaired. It's the video for the squirrel ate my kayak. I'll put the card up in here and you can click it and check it out. But what it was was a Outback like this. It was a yellow one, just like my Pro Angler and a squirrel had gotten to the rod holders and eaten out every rod holder. One of the rod holders were completely gone where the squirrel just chewed a big hole there. And I used gator guards to actually completely repair all of the rod holders. And one of them we just deleted because it was gone anyway. So we used gator guards to completely patch it over. 
and seal the boat. So that's what we're gonna use in today's video. I'm gonna show you the different sizes that you can go about repairing it. And I'm gonna show you the damage where I found the leak and how I found it. So there's a few different ways to go about looking for the crack or the hole where the water's coming into your kayak. First, if you've got a sit on kayak like this one and it's got a hole, the hole meaning you can't see all the way through it versus a sit in kayak, which you're actually in the hole. So if you've got a sit in kayak and it's taking on water, you can pretty much just look around in the kayak while you're on the water and see the whole floor and see where the water's coming in. These are a little bit harder because you can't see the inside of this kayak. So so you're never sure where the water's coming in. So the, one of the ways that I do, and that's the way I did it with this one, I took this out yesterday, put it on some saw horses in my driveway, stuck a hose pipe in one of the hatches and just completely filled this boat up. And what I found was, let me flip it up for you. This is what I found on this kayak. So as you can see here, there is a black spot right here on the front of the Mirage Drive. And I'll grab this other camera, give you guys a close up. So as you can see, this is where someone has tried to repair this kayak once before. And what I found when I filled this kayak up was uh, the first thing I look for is I look at all the scupper holes. Once the water is completely full in this kayak, I get up under it, I shine a flashlight and I look in areas like this and any deep gouges that I see to see if there's any water that's weeping out. Now, most kayaks that are old like this, you're gonna see the bottoms and depending on how well they're taken care of, they're either gonna have a ton of scratches, you know, kind of like this. This one's not too bad. There's a lot of scratches, but these holes are designed to take this kind of damage. And this one's definitely been drug around most of his life without a kayak cart, but there was no water coming out. Most of this is cosmetic. There's a few deep ones right here on the bottom, but I checked all of this and there was actually no water coming into the hole on any of the scupper holes or any of these scratches. Where I did find water coming in was right where they've been working on it before. And what I found was the water wasn't just squirting out. It was actually seeping out right through. Let me grab this other camera for you the water was actually just kind of seeping out of this whole area. Now, I can see where the other people had issues working on this kayak and trying to seal the hole because the hole isn't just on the bottom or around a scupper hole. It was right here where the Mirage Drive goes. So they actually tried to repair this in a, with a couple of different ways. And I'll show you a, another repair job that looks familiar, but they tried to repair it by using this black stuff. I don't know if this is like flex seal or what. It's kind of hard, but it's also kind of soft. So I don't know if they've done it. They definitely heated the boat up, but it's obviously not working because the water, the hole is under here somewhere and the water was actually seeping through. And this is where the leak was coming from this whole area. But let me show you another spot. Do you see this stuff right here? The, the darker blue stuff. There was a lot more than that. I was able to flake it off, but this looks very familiar to me because I've seen this kind of repair job before because there's videos on the internet and you can't trust every video. And I, I know it's weird for me to say that because I'm making a video showing you how to do it, but there's a few videos online where people actually go to Lowe's and they buy the Lowe's buckets, the blue buckets. And as you can see by this right here, I'm pretty sure this was a blue bucket. And what people do is they cut the plastic out, they melt the plastic, and then they drip it onto their kayak, sealing the crack. Well, that's not gonna work if you're gonna, it will work. I know there's a gonna, you're gonna blow my comments up. It will work as long as you heat up the kayak to the same temperature as the melted plastic that you're pouring in so that it can mix together. If you pour hot plastic over a crack on your cold plastic kayak, it is not gonna do anything for that crack. It is just gonna harden up on top and will eventually just flake off and the water's gonna come right around it. So that's what was done here. Someone just heated up some plastic and they rubbed it around the edges trying to find a, the hole and seal it up. So, but I didn't see any water coming in any of this blue area. So I, I, I looked, I kind of chipped most of it off and started looking for it. So my plan today is I'm going to sand this area down and it is gonna be tricky, like I said, because this wraps, this black stuff that they've got on here, wraps through the Mirage Drive hole all the way up through the top. And I'll have to flip the kayak back over to show you guys that, but it comes all the way around and you won't be able to see too good with this camera, but it goes way up in there. But my plan is I'm gonna start on the bottom and I'm gonna sand this 
completely down. I'm going to use a disc sander on some of it, then we're just going to rough all this up, and then we're going to put a big gator patch. Now, I'll show you these. Look. I've got a few of these here. Let me set this camera back down. This is what I use to repair kayaks. These are gator patches by Gator Guards. Now, I'm going to link this in the video description. This stuff is great if you're wanting to repair a kayak or if you want to just be prepared. You can go get small patches like this. And as you can see, I keep a lot handy. I keep one on my kayak at all times because this is something that you can actually use to repair your kayak out on an island when you're camping. If you're on a weekend camping trip and the first thing you do is pop a hole in your kayak, if you've got this in the sunlight, you can patch your kayak because UV rays actually cure this. That's why it's in the little aluminum foil style packaging. But what you'll do is you'll prep the area, you'll stick your gator patch on, you'll rub it down really good, you'll set it out in the sunlight, the UV light cures it, bonds it to the kayak, makes it hard, and you can actually sand this and paint it when you're done. So what I use when I'm in the shop, because it's like 22 degrees outside right now here in Alabama, but what I use to cure it is one of these. This is gonna be kind of silly, but I'll link it below. And if you watch my other video where I did the, the squirrel ate my kayak video, this is a nail salon, gel nail cure, whatever. But what it is, is UV lights. And my wife actually does her nails and she's got a few of these. And when she puts the, the crap on her fingers, whatever it is, she puts her hand up under here for a few minutes and it cures her nails, makes it hard as a rock. Basically the same elements in her nail stuff is in these gator patches. So what I'm gonna do is we'll, we'll put the patch on after everything is prepped. You'll see me sand everything down. We'll put the patch on and then I will start placing this UV light on top of it and I'll leave it on for you know, 10, 15 minutes at a time and I'll keep moving it around, make sure the UV light gets to everything. Now, if it was summertime, I would definitely take this outside, set it in the sun because the sun is great for this. This UV light does work, so all you gotta do is get on Amazon and find you a good UV light. These are great because you can just set them right on top, but the sunlight also works really good. So if you're camping, you don't have one of these, of course, but you got the sun, that's all you need. So make sure if you're into kayak fishing and you don't have any gator patches, get you one. They don't cost that much. They're good to have on hand. Throw them in the kayak, throw them in the back seat of the truck. They last for a very long time as long as you don't open the packaging and you'll always be prepared to fix your kayak. So with all that said, what I'm gonna do is throw the camera up, get to sanding, I'm gonna get this smooth and I'll show you guys how I apply the gator patches and we'll get this thing sanded down, sealed up and back to the subscriber. All right, so before I get to sanding on this, I just wanna say you're gonna see me use a bunch of different tools and you don't have to use any of that. You can just use regular sandpaper. Now, if you're on a camping trip, obviously you can't use sanding paper if you don't have any. The gator patches will still work. But to do, to do a really good job, if you do do this in your garage or at home and you have access to sanding the area down, cleaning it, you wanna use some good alcohol after you get it sanded. Take the steps, do it right. I'm gonna do it the correct way. I'm gonna use some extra stuff because I'm in my garage and I have access to it, but we're gonna sand this down now. I'm gonna get everything scuffed up, wipe it down with alcohol, apply the gator patches, get everything rolled over. I just gotta keep in mind that I can't build up these corners too much. When I fold this over, I don't want it to be thick because his Mirage Drive still has to fit in and out of this hole. So I can't build this up too much. I've gotta take in mind that whenever I start wrapping these corners. So. All right, let's get to uh, sanding this boat. So 
I've got everything sanded down and now I'm just taking some rubbing alcohol and I'm cleaning up everywhere I sanded and then all the way around it and getting the area prepared for it to adhere. I really hope that uh, whatever this is, it, when I started sanding it, I'm actually seeing some fiberglass in it. Cause, so maybe whatever this black patch was, actually someone put fiberglass down first and then went over top of the fiberglass. So I, I don't know why, but I've never seen black on top of fiberglass. That's new to me. But I'm just using some isopropyl alcohol, cleaning the whole area. Now the, the patch that I'm gonna use on the bottom is their nine by 12, and they've got a bunch of different sizes, like I said. I'm gonna do the big one here. This one's gonna cover as much area as possible. And then once it's cured, we can go down later, or the owner can, and sand it and blend it and paint it if he wanted to, which I don't think he's gonna wanna paint it. When you open up the gator patches, they look like this. And this one's been in my shop hanging up for a while, but there's the patch. Now, once you open it and you take it out of this, you need to use it because if you expose this to sunlight, it will cure and harden up in this package. So once you open it up, you cut off what you want, you can seal it back in that bag. It's resealable so you can save it. So if you wanna buy a big piece like this, cut little pieces and reseal them, you can. Just don't, don't sit it out in the sunlight because it will cure and harden just like it is. But I'm gonna use this whole patch and I'm literally gonna just cut me a slit here with a razor blade so it'll fold over. And we're gonna put this whole patch right, right over top. And the way you do this is you remove the white backing just like this. There we go. And this is the side that you stick to your kayak. Get this off. And it is very, very sticky. So I like to kind of put a bend right in the center so I can rub it down smooth. And we will put it right here. And I'm just gonna do the middle for now and work my way out. Just like this. And we'll be able to cut this with a razor blade. I just wanna make sure I get this whole area covered here. Cause I don't know where the leak is. It's under this black stuff. So the leak's somewhere either in here or maybe up in here. So we're, I'm gonna make sure that I get every bit of it. Now I'm just gonna rub it down. Just like this. Put a slit in it. Another trick I do is I'll take a socket. See if I can find a good socket here. I'll take like a socket and I'll roll it. And this is before you pull the clear off because that clear coat on top keeps you from sticking to it and it helps you glide and roll right over it. And you can use a good, a big socket and just roll it right over and rub the edges down. All right, so we've got it rubbed down just about everywhere we want it. And you can still form this into areas after you peel the clear off, but I always find it a lot easier to do it before you peel the clear off. So now I'm gonna find a corner. I'm gonna get this little clear stuff started. And we're gonna peel it off. Make sure you get it all off too, if you can. Cause you wanna be able to, you can actually drill through this once it's hard. Now I got that off, I'm gonna form it a little bit more around this edge. Cause I really, like I said earlier, I don't want too much buildup cause his Mirage drive has to come through this hole still. And we've still got to overlap it from the top 
with the other gator guard patch from the inside. So I'm just gonna form this around this edge. Make sure everything is rubbed down. You don't want any air bubbles. So push any air bubbles you see out. So you just plug this thing up and there's different kinds online you can look at. The only downfall with this one I believe is it's got a, it's got a timer and, and there's the UV and the timer starts. And what I do is I'll just set it on top here and then as the timer goes off, it's a 60 second timer and I'll just work it down. And a lot of times on a big patch like this, as it's curing this end, I'll be working, I'll still be working bubbles and edges and stuff out. And I'll just kind of walk it down the kayak and get it completely cured. All right, I'm still curing this bottom piece, but I did want to show you guys what I'm doing now. So I've got the nail salon UV light on this end. And I remembered that I built this box this past, oh, if I don't snatch it all off, check out this box I built. I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera, but I wrapped it in UV lights and I forgot that I built this. This past winter, I got into marling baits and I've been just binge watching the, the, him make them awesome baits. And I, I got into trying to do some bait making myself and I made me this little curing box for the gel coat and it's all UV lights. So I actually brought it over here, turned it on <laughs> and I've also got it curing the lights too. So any UV light that you've got, or if you want to make your own little thing to set up, you can buy these little UV strips. I'll link those in the video description. I think it was like 25 foot of LED UV strip, and I just wrapped it around inside there. But I'm using this to cure it. It's nothing special from here on out. I'm just going to do the same thing. I don't want to stretch this video out. I feel like it's already going to be a super long video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish curing this big patch. Nothing more going on than the light sitting on top and me keeping turning this one on because it's got a timer and then we're going to patch the other side real quick i'm going to cure it and then i'll show you the final product and hopefully you'll be able to patch your own boat seal any cracks that you might find and repair a boat keep you from having to buy another one and, and throwing one away so i'm going to finish curing this patch the other side and then i'll show you guys how it turned out all right i got it flipped back over without killing myself i tell you what this kite cart that i use if you see me using this if you've seen other videos I built it a long time ago. If you haven't built you one of these yet, you guys need to build you one. I got a video, I'll link it here. It's a DIY cart. If you tinker a lot, this is great. I use this more than anything in my shop. I really do. But anyway, let me show you. So here is the Mirage Drive hole. You can see where the gator patches, I kind of just ran them up through here and tucked them in, got them overlapping each other. Now this black is not where all the hole is. This is just where they kind of ran out with the whatever they used to patch it the hole was actually in here so i've got it covered really well what's good about doing this inside is i can continue to mold these gator patches and push them in the cracks and stuff without them curing on me now if you're doing this out in your driveway or something and you got the sunlight on you you got to be kind of quick with it because that uv light will cure this stuff fast so work with it inside if you can what i'm going to do is put the uv light on it tonight leave it overnight just to get that extra curing. I'll probably flip the kayak and do it again tomorrow. And then this thing's gonna be ready to go. I'll sand the edges down and give him a call and tell him his kayak's ready. I don't think he's gonna wanna paint it. Like I said, he just does cardio out on the Kusa with this thing. So he's probably just gonna be happy not to sink out while he's working out. So yeah, that is gonna do it for this week's video, guys. If you liked it, make sure you give that thumbs up for me down below. It really helps my channel out. It helps me grow when you hit that thumbs up button. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. If you want to support me, hit the join button, buy my merch. Well, I don't have, this is an Ike merch, but I've got merch linked below too. You can go check that out if you're interested. And I'll catch you guys next Thursday at two o'clock. Peace.